Do you remember last year's ultimate film? Yes, exactly. I repaired the front left wheelhouse. And do you think the fender was damaged just as badly as the wheelhouse was? Yes, it was. When in German you're trying to say that something is really a mess, you say it looks like under the tail of a chicken or it looks like under the sofa of family Hempel. Nobody knows who this Hempel family really is, but it might well be there from Stuttgart because 9-11 wings can really be a most horrific sight. I think you can see where this is going. The repair panel needs to follow the curved edge of the fender, obviously. And in order to get the cross section right, I decided to divide the entire thing in two pieces. A flexible ruler and magnets would allow me to mark the first panel in a way that the curvature would harmoniously match the body line of the fender. The gentle bend of panel 1 was shaped with the hammer and the vise, which I think is quite a maniac way to get this job done. But you see, the bend needed to run along the curved line, so it couldn't just go into the bending machine. I tacked the panel to the fender and it almost made me cry that I had to destroy parts of the beautiful Prussian blue paint. But there was no alternative because rust had already spread beyond the edge of the fold. I removed all paint layers as close as about 5 cm to the place where welding would take place and tried to keep welding temperatures as small as possible to save as much as possible of the paint.
Placing the seam right in the fold, the MIG welding bead with all its warts and bulges had to be turned into a proper radius and that meant that my full arsenal of grinding tools was deployed. With the outer side shaped properly, the inside was trimmed with the cutting disc of the angle grinder, not with a grinding disc. It's a bit of a misuse of that thin disc because actually it doesn't resist bending forces very well. But with a little concentration and some face protection, everything's going to be fine. And that was panel one. The fabrication of panel 2 began, how else could it be, with a tape template. Its shape, of course, needs to follow the curvature of the wing just as panel 1 did. And what do you expect? It's a Porsche, the entire car is a curved line, and that's the whole point about it. And while I shaped panel 1 with the hammer, I got the beading machine out for panel 2. Beading machines are great, but with a small panel like this one, a fair bit of unwanted deformation goes with the desired one, so the hammer is needed in any case. When the general shape of the panel was about right, I started copying the stiffening beads and the pockets for the wing speed nuts. The latter using the exact same mold I used when last time I repaired that spot at Walter.
With panel two welded in, another grinding orgy took place, and these are the nights when a beer, a pizza and a sofa is all you need. Repairing a 911 fender with that many damages, it doesn't necessarily make sense from a commercial point of view. My friends at JP have therefore developed a repair panel for the affected section, and all the handwork you've hopefully enjoyed to watch in the past couple of minutes can now be saved with a mouse click. The repair was finished off with Terrazone 2 component tin solder replacement, which covers any micro pinhole that there may be without allowing any water to get to the steel. Time to turn to the headlight housing. It's a rather common rust damage with G models. Dirt collects between the container of the screen washers and the pot, and if not removed regularly, it builds up a sponge-like lump that, once soaked with water, will stay wet for weeks and eat through the panel. It's very bad. The pot is welded to the fender with about a dozen spots that need to be drilled out. I use a spot weld cutter for this. The latch the pot is connected to, however, is not very big, so I made sure I get the cutter centered properly using my automatic punch and by making a guide bore before the cutter was applied. It would be best, of course, to only cut through the pot and not the latch, but that is easier said than done, as space is too tight to keep the cutter perpendicular to the surface. Cars today 
dear viewers, as hard as it may be to believe as the old fashioned petrol heads that we are, are glued together to a surprisingly high degree. Porsche's 991, for instance, is made of steel and aluminium. And what else would you do to connect these materials than gluing them? I used another Terrazon product for this purpose and my idea to apply the glue bead and let it be fed into the gap when hammering the pot in, it worked! It's by the way a novelty on my channel that you can now get Amazon affiliate links of the products I use. And no matter what you buy, a glue, a laptop, a German main battle tank or maybe the Greenland island, I get a share in it if you use my link to open the Amazon site. It's a very good way to support the channel. This was my first experience with gluing body parts and it was a very good one. I think I'm going to use it more in the future and there are ideas maturing in my head to apply it to the numerous optimistic welding concepts of Alfa Romeo's 105 series. When we had removed the right wing, luckily we didn't find much to worry about. With all panel work completed, I threw a layer of epoxy primer on the blank metal. I still have no better way to remove Porsche's Bluetooth body sealing tape than wire wheeling it off and that means that a new coating had to be started. Blue and clear are going to be applied soon to the fenders and then I will turn to the right wheel well, which I guess will keep us entertained for a little while.